Okay, great. Thank you so much, Craig, um, for that nice introduction and for the opportunity to speak in this special session that celebrates Plural's rich history and leadership in Great Lakes science. I was really delighted to be invited to speak in the session about, Plural, about Plural's long-term commitment to developing the, great, the next generation of Great Lakes scientists because it's such, it is such an important part of the work they do um, to ensure the, the safeguarding of the people and the Great Lakes. I am Mary Ogdahl. I'm the Managing Director for the Cooperative Institute for Great Lakes Research, which is a NOAA-funded cooperative institute that is based at the University of Michigan and is co-located with NOAA Goral. Uh, to begin, or before I begin, I would like to acknowledge my co-authors on this presentation, Aubrey Lashaway, Margaret Throck Throckmorton, and Abigail Goodman, all of Sigler, and Nicole Rice from NOAA Goral. So for today's talk, I will first begin by talking a little bit about NOAA's ed education strategic plan. Then I will talk briefly about NOAA cooperative institutes and the important role they play in workforce development for NOAA. I will then talk about the history of the collaborative hands-on education and training that NOAA and Sigler do together. And I'll take a few moments to specifically highlight our Great Lakes Summer Fellows Program, which is really a showcase for inclu inclusive career preparation. I'll show a few examples of successful career training outcomes uh, that, that really demonstrate Plural's return on investment in their workforce development. And then I'll wrap up by talking about um, a little bit about our future vision for workforce development in the Great Lakes. So the importance that NOAA places on workforce development is underscored by its inclusion in NOAA's, in NOAA's education strategic plan. Specifically, goal, goal four of this plan states that a, it is to develop a diverse and highly skilled future workforce that pursues careers and disciplines that support NOAA's mission. Under this goal, there are three objectives, and each of these objectives specifically calls out providing opportunities for students that come from underrepresented backgrounds. These objectives are for students to become aware of and interested in education and career pathways and NOAA mission disciplines for students to explore and prepare for these careers, and for graduates to enter the NOAA mission workforce. In this presentation, I'll be demonstrating how Plural, through their partnership with Sigler, has invested in implementing a number of the strategies that are outlined in the NOAA Education Strategic Plan for Workforce Development. These strategies include providing scholarships and fellowships for undergraduate and graduate students, providing work-based learning and experiences for students, increasing opportunities for students that come from underrepresented backgrounds, working with academic partners to prepare students for NOAA's future workforce needs, and preparing and providing fellowship opportunities for postdocs. The National Network of NOAA Cooperative Institutes, shown on this map, play a key role in fulfilling NOAA's workforce development objectives. These CIs were created by law to, for the purpose of advancing NOAA's mission, specifically in the areas of research, education, training, and outreach. The NOAA Cooperative Institute Handbook emphasizes our role in education by stating that NOAA CIs support graduate education and professional scientific training of a workforce well-versed and NOAA disciplines and provide opportunities for students to interact with NOAA scientists. In this way, CIs can be considered the engine of mission-focused workforce development for NOAA. Within Sigler, our education and training activities are organized and implemented within our ECO program. ECO stands for Engagement, Career Training, and Outreach. And within the career training part of this program, our goal is to promote a skilled and diverse workforce by providing career training opportunities for undergraduates, graduate students, and postdocs who will become the next generation of NOAA and Great Lakes scientists. Over the past 35 years, since the inception of Siler in 1989, Glural has invested in the development of their future workforce through our partnership. Using the, cooper using the Cooperative in Institute as an instrument for training and education, while also dedicating the time and expertise of their scientists to co-mentor students and postdocs alongside Cooperative Institute personnel. In turn, Siler and now Sigler has provided access to students, both undergraduate and undergraduate, and recruited and trained postdocs in the skills needed to fulfill Glural Science priorities. 
Sigler also, also leverages the, our regional consortium of partners that span the entire Great Lakes and on both sides of the border as depicted in this figure to um, significantly expand our workforce development capacity. So we have students and postdocs that we work with, um, both our Sigler scientists and girl scientists work with these um, students at our partner institutions across the Great Lakes, which greatly enhances that capacity through our partnership. Together, Sigler and GLURAL provide a number of hands-on research experiences for students and postdocs that are jointly funded by GLURAL and the University of Michigan. We offer competitive fellowships to graduate students and postdocs that, that work within our regional consortium institutions. And these students and postdocs are importantly co-mentored by both their faculty advisor at their home institution and by a Sigler or GLURAL scientist. So, so they really are, even though they are at their home locations, they still are embedded in, in our research universe, I guess. Uh, we also support graduate students and postdocs to work with us in, uh, within our research projects. And again, those are both in-house, working in-house with us at the GLURAL laboratory and throughout the regional consortium. And finally, Sigler and Girl collaborate to host our Great Lakes Summer Fellows Program, which I'll spend some time talking about in a few moments. Through these student and postdoc opportunities, Girl has supported training opportunities for over 1,000 students and postdocs since 1998, which is as far back as our records currently go. This figure shows how these opportunities have increased over time with the numbers growing of students and postdocs trained each year um, particularly since 2018, when Sigler started our um, fellowships with our consortium partners that I talked about in the previous slide. In recent years, uh, we have trained between 80 and 120 students and postdocs each year. So next, I'll spend some time highlighting the Great Lakes Summer Fellows Program, which has been the cornerstone of Sigler and Girls' career training efforts since the inception of Siler in 1989. With annual funding from NOAA GLURAL, Sigler has provided hands-on immersive research training for 371 students since 1998. In this highly competitive program, undergraduate students and graduate students from across the country come to GLURAL to participate in research projects that are mentored by Sigler and GLURAL scientists. The goals of this program are twofold. They are to train the next generation of Great Lakes and NOAA scientists, and also to increase diversity in STEM fields. Over the years, we have worked together to develop this into a robust program to give students the su support, training, and experiences that go well beyond their individual research projects to shape their fellowships into ex an experience that really helps to, sh to um, shape and be impactful for their future career journey. Throughout their 12-week fellowships, students work with their mentors on projects that are tailored to their individual experiences, interests, and their skills. And they also work with program staff to give them a really well-rounded fellowship experience. With the program staff, they attend uh, semi-weekly sessions in which they become exposed to the um, diverse research portfolio at Sigler and GLURL. They receive um, mentoring and career, career development, and they also develop new skills that they might not be getting within their, within their research projects. So some examples of the topics that we cover with the students in these sessions include uh, writing manuscripts, preparing resumes and cover letters. We talk about interview skills, and we also do things like um, effective science presentations. We, um, our fellows also work really closely with our communication specialists throughout their fellowship, culminating at the end of the fellowship, each fellow comes away with a video where they are featured talking about their research project and um, their fellowship experience, which is always a really um, transformative experience for them to learn how to, to do that kind of thing. Uh, we host a number of uh, cohort building and social activities for the fellows over the course of the summer. We provide one-on-one -on -one support that goes beyond the research project, so it can be anything from their plans for graduate school to looking for jobs. Um, so we provide that support along with um, a number of networking opportunities so they can interact with scientists outside of their projects. At Sigler and GLURAL, we believe that the greatest opportunity to increase diversity in STEM disciplines and in the NOAA workforce is through student recruitment and training. 
Over the years, we've made significant changes to the program to attract a broader range of student applicants. In particular, Glero has supported greater program funding to reduce financial barriers to participation. This has allowed us to offer equitable compensation to ensure that students from any, any socioeconomic background can afford to participate in the program. It's also allowed us to provide travel support for students that are re relocating to Ann Arbor for the summer and to provide paid local transportation to students that may not have a personal vehicle. We've also made some changes to the program over the years to allow students uh, to have a flexible work location. So those that may not be able to relocate to Ann Arbor for the summer can participate in the program remotely from their home locations. We also work with the research mentors to ensure that th there are minimal required skills and qualifications required so that to provide greater access to students that may not have as robust of a research background. We have a strong recruiting plan to attract students from a wide range of backgrounds, and we also require all of our mentors to uh, take unconscious bias training before they review applications or conduct interviews. So we began collecting voluntary information on applicants, race, ethnicity, and gender in 2016. This figure shows the proportion of students that applied in dashed lines and the uh, proportion, proportion of students in the accepted cohorts in solid lines with data from students self-identifying as non-male shown in orange and those self-identifying as non-white in blue. So we've seen a steady increase in uh, applicants identifying as non-male over, over this period. Um, although, and um, it's been over 70% in the last couple of years. The proportion identifying as non-male in the accepted cohort has been a little bit more variable, but it has been over 50% during most of the years over this period, and the last two years has been over 80%, which was higher than the proportion in the um, applicant pool. We have seen um, hovering right around 30% of applicants that self-identify as non-white in the applicant pool. And similar to those um, identifying as non-male, those identifying as non-white is also pretty variable in the accepted cohort. However, in the last couple of years, it has been between 38 and 54% and a higher, higher proportion than the overall applicant pool. All right, so greater than any statistic or figure, the greatest measure of our success in career training is the outcomes for the students and postdocs that have been mentored in NOAA mission research. In the next few slides, I'd like to highlight some of these examples that demonstrate NOAA's return on investment um, for their long-term workforce development. Starting with postdocs, we have a really strong track record of successful um, uh, career placements of postdocs after their time spent with us. Um, notably, four of our seven Cooperative Institute principal investigators began as postdocs in Sigler before they were competitively hired into research scientist positions. Other successful career placements include postdocs moving into faculty positions at various places across the country, uh, environmental consulting positions, and government positions with places like USGS and the State of Michigan um, Office of the Great Lakes. Similar to the postdocs that have trained with us, we also have a strong rec track record of student placement directly into Sigler staff positions. And this is really owing to the highly technical nature of the training they receive with us, as well as the requirements of many of our technical staff positions. All of the individuals shown on the top row here started out as either graduate students or postdoc, or sorry, excuse me, summer fellows. Um, with Sigler and were later hired into permanent staff positions or joined us as PhD students. A few other examples of su successful career placements include positions with the Great Lakes Fishery Commission, Great Lakes Commission, US EPA, and GLOSS, among others. And finally, the last set of examples that I'll share reflect Girl's greatest return on workforce development investment. And these are transitions from Sigler training into the NOAA workforce. 
five of the current rural principal investigators began their NOAA training in the Cooperative Institute as either staff members, postdocs, or uh, research scientists. In addition, 11 of the current rural technical staff members began their NOAA careers in the Cooperative Institute as graduate students, staff, summer fellows, and postdocs. So together, all of these examples that I've shared um, really demonstrate how rural's long history of scientific leadership and investment in the future have paid off in the development of a highly skilled scientific workforce. Looking toward the future of workforce development in the Great Lakes, we aim to continue building inclusive pathways into Great Lakes and NOAA careers by extending the training pipeline to younger age groups. Our goal is to, to connect the programs that we currently have, which provide opportunities for undergraduates, graduate students, and postdocs to other existing programs that reach high school students by providing um, Excuse me, excuse me, by, per, by conducting outreach to infuse Great Lakes science into their curricula and also providing outreach and mentoring to ultimately build sustainable pathways from high school into higher education through our programs and eventually into Great Lakes science careers. We also plan to invest in direct recruitment of students at historically black colleges and universities Hispanic serving institutions and tribal colleges and universities, partly through partnership with NOAA's cooperative science centers. These centers train students at minority serving institutions in NOAA mission related science. So we feel that partnering with them would really help to bolster our efforts to um, increase diversity in our programs. Okay, with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your time and attention and I would be happy to take questions.